Jurassic Park 3 is often looked at as the worst of the Jurassic Park movies. It didn't fit in as much with the other movies, and there wasn't much of a story to it. But while JP3 did have its flaws, it did have some redeeming qualities. One of these qualities was the plotline of Eric Kirby. You know the story. He survived for 8 weeks alone on Isla Sorna, and he was only 12 years old. He did what no other character in the series has done before. Honestly, that would have been a decent plot for JP3 in general. Unfortunately, it wasn't, and when Eric makes his reappearance, it's after the 8 weeks have already passed, so we never got to actually see him survive during that time. A lot is left up to the imagination, so today I'm going to explore the question, how did Eric Kirby survive? To answer this question, I'm only going to be using information from the movies, since the spin-off book Survivor is not considered official canon. I'll discuss a variety of categories and how it relates to Eric's survival. Remember, the ideas and theories in this video are mostly speculations. Now before I discuss Eric Kirby's survival, let's do a quick analysis of Isla Sorna. Isla Sorna is a tropical island located 207 miles west of Costa Rica. So for the sake of this video, let's relate Isla Sorna's geology, climate, etc. to that of Costa Rica, since they're close to each other. As we know from both The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3, Isla Sorna is heavily populated with various species of dinosaurs. In The Lost World, Hammond mentioned that Hurricane Clarissa wiped out the facilities on the island, so all the buildings are in ruins. There are no fences or boundaries. Well, mostly. The dinosaurs are free to roam and the island is theirs to claim. There's vast jungle in every direction and Eric's stuck right in the middle of it all. So the first thing I want to discuss is Ben and Eric landing on the island. Ben likely died from injuries from the fall shortly after they landed, which would explain why his body was found high up in the tree. So Eric was on his own as soon as he landed on the island. Now let's take a look at where they landed. As we saw in the movie, they landed right by a cluster of velociraptor nests. What luck! When Grant and the others found the nests, there were no raptors guarding them, so the same could be suggested for when Eric came across the nests. But if a raptor was nearby and Eric were to come in contact with it, his only chance of survival would be to climb a tree and wait for it to leave, like Billy and the others did. So there may have been a time where Eric was stuck in the trees for an extended period of time. He either had to hop from tree to tree until he was out of reach of the nests, or just book it through the jungle. So right from the get-go, Eric was in dangerous territory, and he needed to find a safe place, fast. This leads us into our first category, shelter. After trekking through the jungle, Eric eventually reached the embryonics compound and explored it. Eric figured that if anyone came looking for him, the compound is where they'd start. While Eric searched the compound, he found a vast array of different items. If you look inside the water truck, most if not all of the supplies were taken from the compound. He had lots of various items such as ropes, crates, bottles, and lights. He used these items to make himself a little shelter inside the truck. He even seemed to have made himself a makeshift bed out of an old cushion. You might be asking, if he had access to the compound, why didn't he just use that for shelter? The thing is, he did, at first. But due to reasons I'll discuss shortly, he had to pick up and move again, and that's when he found the water truck. Remember, the compound wasn't that far away from the raptor nests, and there could have been raptors patrolling the area of the compound for any threats. Eric was at risk, even in the compound, because buildings don't guarantee safety. After all, Look at the worker village in the Lost World. It's quite possible that Eric encountered a raptor while he was in the compound and managed to escape. Because of this, Eric had to find a new shelter that he could easily get to, easily hide in, and was away from the dinosaurs. This is when he found the water truck in the swamp. It was close enough to the compound for him to get supplies, but still out of reach of the raptors. The water truck was a good shelter because it was secure, sturdy, and out of reach from most dinosaurs. It would keep him safe from weather and also keep him warm. Now that Eric had found shelter, he'd need to find necessities vital to his survival, one of them being our next category, water. Eric told Grant, the closer you get to water, the bigger things get. Let's talk about what that means. Eric's water truck was in a dirty swamp, so he couldn't drink that water without getting sick, so he would need to find fresh water. So let's say Eric explored the island and found a water source, like a stream or a river. He was able to get water, but so were the dinosaurs. Big dinosaurs. Oftentimes, large herbivores gather to drink, as we see when the boat passes by them. Some dinosaur herds like the Stegosaurus would have babies in their herd. Eric could accidentally spook them and risk being crushed by the herbivores if he drank alongside them. He may have had a close call, and because of that, he wouldn't dare go back to that water source again, which could suggest why Eric was hesitant about heading for the coast. Now it's hard to see, but you can make out a small stream along the compound. He could have used that as a water source, but remember, it was in raptor territory, so they'd be there to drink too. So if that's the case, how did Eric get water to survive? Well, take a closer look in the water truck. Notice how Eric has a big water jug? He could have done one of two things. First thing is that he could have went to the water and scooped some up in the jug, 
but then he'd have to lug it all the way back to the truck. It would slow him down tremendously, and he'd be an easy target if he was ever caught by a predator, so not a very sensible idea. The second and more likely thing he did was place the jug outside and use it as a rain catcher. If we look at the climate of Costa Rica, the rainy season in most regions ranges from May to November, and if we assume that Eric was stranded in July of 2001, that would mean he was there during the rainy season. It's likely that Isla Soren was also affected by the rains of Costa Rica. Maybe not as directly affected as Costa Rica itself, but affected enough. There are scenes in JP3 which suggest that Isla Sorna has recently seen rain. In addition, it rained heavily during the Spinosaurus attack scene, so if it rained like that for many days during Eric's stay, then he'd have plenty of water to sustain himself, and he could gather it safely. So Eric now had a good shelter and fresh water to drink. But there was still something missing, and that something is our next category, food. When it came to food, Eric had lots of different kinds at his disposal. For one thing, we saw that Eric had a box filled with snacks from the compound's vending machines. Another thing is that Grant is seen eating some canned food, probably some stew or chunky soup. This was found in the compound as well. So to get this food, Eric would have to go back and forth to the compound to get it. But the problem is that the compound only had a limited supply of food. What would Eric do if he ever ran out? Luckily for Eric, Costa Rica has lots of fruits growing there, such as mangoes, bananas, and coconuts. We can assume that these same fruits grow on Isla Sorna as well. Eric searched the jungles for fruits he could eat. They would provide him with the nutrients he needed, and they were plentiful on the island. With all these different foods, it was enough for Eric to survive. So Eric now had food, water, and shelter. But how would Eric protect himself if he were ever in danger? Let's find out in the next category, defense. When Eric arrived on Isla Sorna, he had nothing but the clothes on his back. Wearing a bright red shirt, Eric stuck out like a sore thumb in the jungle. He was probably chased by dinosaurs because of this. He needed to find some way to conceal himself. When he was exploring the compound, he found a brown ingen coat. This would help keep him warm at night and to camouflage himself. On top of the coat, he made a poncho of leaves. This helped him blend in with the jungle, as we see when he rescues Grant. This disguise would especially help him when he had to go back and forth to the compound to gather food and supplies, and to explore the island. Also, did you notice how Eric's clothes were dirty when we see him again? He rubbed dirt on them to help hide his scent. Speaking of scent, Eric suggested that gathering the T-Rex urine was a very unpleasant task. What probably happened is that Eric was exploring the island and came across a T-Rex. Thinking back to Grant's books, he froze so it wouldn't see him. He may have been standing next to a big tree at this time. The T-Rex didn't notice Eric and took a huge piss all over the tree and Eric, then ran off. Eric, now covered in piss, saw that the T-Rex left behind a piss puddle, so he scooped some up in a bottle and took it with him. But having T-Rex urine was both good and bad. Eric said that it scared away smaller dinosaurs like raptors, but it also attracted the Spinosaurus, which leads me to believe that Eric had an encounter with the Spinosaurus before, which I'll talk more about shortly. In terms of weaponry, Eric never found any weapons he could use, but he did find gas grenades. These would be useful for when he needed to make a quick getaway from dinosaurs. In the movie, we saw that he used the gas grenades to scare away the raptors. He then tells Grant that he used the last of them, which to me suggests that he's used some before. My theory? He used some during his encounter with the Spinosaurus. Remember, Eric said that the T-Rex urine attracted the Spinosaurus. What I think could have happened is that he tried using some of the urine while exploring the island. Sure, it kept the smaller dinosaurs away, but it just so happened to attract the Spinosaurus. So Eric would have climbed a tree and chucked gas grenades when he heard the Spinosaurus coming, because he wouldn't stand a chance any other way. The Spinosaurus would be deterred by the gas and leave the area. Eric probably didn't even know the Spinosaurus existed until after he used the urine, so he probably never used it again, but kept it just in case. Another interesting piece in Eric's arsenal was the Raptor Claw. What's really interesting is that he said it was new. How he got it is anyone's guess, but my guess is that he was exploring the island and came across some herbivores grazing in a field. Raptors came out of the bushes and attacked the herbivores, and one of them broke its claw off during the fight. After the dinosaurs left, Eric went and took the claw for himself. I'm sure that claw came in handy. He could use it as a weapon, or he could use it to cut fruit. So Eric now had food, water, shelter, and some means of defending himself. But Eric had another necessity needed for survival, and that happens to be our next category, knowledge. In the movie, we learned that Eric was a dinosaur enthusiast. He read about dinosaurs in Grant's books and learned a lot about them. Now that he was on Isla Sorna, he'd have to put this knowledge to good use. He had to understand how the dinosaurs behaved if he was going to survive. Part of that understanding involves observation, and if he wanted to observe, he had to be stealthy. This is where his disguise comes into play again. By observing the behavior of the dinosaurs, he could learn how different species interacted with each other, which areas of the island were safe, 
and when he can explore the island and not be attacked. Learning all this would help keep him alive. He exercised all the knowledge he gained about dinosaurs, and because of this, he was able to live and basically become a part of the island's ecosystem. For the final category, I want to talk about something that you wouldn't expect to hear about in a Jurassic Park video, but necessary for the subject. Mental stability. Being stranded on a deserted island for eight weeks would certainly take its toll on someone, especially if they were alone. But when Grant meets Eric, he seems to be in a good state of mind. So how did Eric keep a strong mind when he was faced with danger at every turn? To find out, let's take a step-by-step -step look at Eric's mental state throughout his journey. When Eric first arrived on the island, I'm sure he was in a state of panic. After all, Ben died right in front of him, and he was all alone on an island of dinosaurs. For the first little while, I'm sure Eric was driven by fear because his situation was so dire, especially since he was still a kid. He was basically running scared. But I think that finding the compound in the water truck gave him a sense of hope, that he had a chance of surviving if he wanted it bad enough. Obviously, he did want it bad enough, because what Eric did next was the choice between life or death. Simply put, Eric learned to adapt. If he didn't, he would die. He understood that he was in a whole new environment, and that he had to play by nature's rules if he wanted to live. Whenever he was faced with danger, he used his brain and fought for his survival. Even though he was alone, he could keep himself occupied by talking to himself, or singing, or something like that. This would prevent loneliness from overwhelming him and driving him crazy. I think once he learned to adapt, he kept hold of his will to live, and as a result, kept a stable mind. Put all these categories together, and you can get an idea of how Eric survived on Isla Sorna. His journey is still up to the imagination to figure out, but regardless, Eric was an intelligent, resourceful kid. He had the smarts and the know-how to understand what he needed to do to survive. This whole experience changed Eric's life forever, and shaped him into a strong young man. Because of his story, Eric stands out from the other characters in the series in one major way. Eric Kirby is a true survivor. And that's a wrap for another Jurassic Park video by me. What do you think Eric Kirby did to survive? Talk about it in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to me as well. I got lots of content on the way for you. See you next time.